what's going on? I'm about to get a tour at the brand new Swashbuckler Brewery at the Mountain Hope Estate in Lebanon, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And he's about to show me. Uh, now you just moved the uh, the brewery up into this new building. Yeah, we moved up uh, last July. It used to be the breweries on the grounds. People that came to the fair park remember that there was a little brewery, ten barrel brewery on grounds. We couldn't make enough beer, so we expanded, put in a 15, 15 barrel brewery. And we've got uh, six 30-barrel uh, fermenters. Expanded our capacity to about 4,500 barrels, up from about 1,000. So. All right, well, we're going to take a look at how things uh, work here. This is the actual brew house, these three vessels. Uh, kettle, lager ton, and then the other vessel is the hot liquor tank, basically just a big hot water. Basically, just two different types of beer, there's ales and lagers, so technically speaking. Ales are a top of any beer. The, the, the yeast sits on top, works its way through the beer. And they usually ferment at a higher temperature. Lagers are bottom fermented. Oh. Yeast stays on the bottom, and they ferment at a lower temperature. And difference being, since it's you know lagers go at a lower temperature, there's an old saying: brewers make beer, okay. yeast makes beer. Okay. So that's where, so that's where the beer sits. That's where we introduce the yeast, and it will sit there again anywhere between two weeks to six weeks. Okay. That's why I'm doing that. Full sale hefeweizen. One of my favorites to brew, but you can, uh, mm. you can taste the bananas starting to come through. Right, the yeast. right, and sort of the uh, the yeast like, is a lot for this beer. Say that like orange peel, and orange peel, peel kind, of, of, uh, kind of, yeah. So this is the Kolsch. It's, Kolsch? It's done for many we're actually getting ready, ripping a tank, right tank right now, getting ready to filter it over, so basically, it just needs filtered and it's not quite to carbonation right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's fantastic. Whoever wins the homebrew contest at our brew fest, uh, they get to then the next year come here and brew a 15 barrel batch of it. Oh, wow. So this is uh, Mary Ellen Dooley who won the brew fest last year with the milk stout. She came a couple weeks ago and uh, we, she gave her a recipe, we converted it into 15 barrels, and she helped me brew it. And then she'll be here at the Brewfest this year. Oh, wow. Order, so this, order on brew. So this is last year's home brew last year brew brew fest. Winner. Now gets a batch at next year's brew fest. Made. That's a prize. So, That's a prize. Yeah. It's about beyond anything you can do. It right? turned out very nice. If you like milk stouts. Wow, I do. And uh, very nice mouth feel to it. Go oh, on, get the chocolate yeah. just before I even sip it. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. It's coffee and chocolate and uh, real nice and not too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's not too strong or thick. It's It's got just enough sweetness. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. well done, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen Dooley. <laughs> Mary, Ellen Dooley. <laughs> Mary Ellen Dooley. It's her recipe. It's Sounds like a Saturday Night Live character. She makes a meat milk stuff. <laughs> Basically, box were made in the springtime. Um, monks made them during one. Box beer, box beers. When they fast, so they couldn't eat, but they could drink beer. So then they make these big hearty beers to sustain them. Uh -huh. they okay. could live. So that's why box is, in general are usually a little higher alcohol. Oh. Um, and then that's again, your, your darker ones, like your Dalpa box, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, but you get a real uh, nice malt flavor in the mouthfeel on this. Very slightly hot just for balance. You can really taste any hops. So just hops cut down on the Sweetness, a little hot on the nose, but a real nice ball tea. Very good spring beer. These are actually serving tanks. During fair, is actually filled with beer. These actually will go to the taps. So I've got an underground line that runs from the brewery down to that tower there. And I hook up another hose, and I actually send beer down from the brewery wow. to fill up these tanks. These tanks. Yeah. You get a beer right out of these tanks. The beer goes right from these tanks oh. out of the tanks. Just because we get to way too much beer, you know, we'll probably do a busy weekend almost 100 grams of beer, which is 200 and a half mm -hmm. kegs. Yeah. And it's just, if we were just run out of kegs at these bars, all we do is change the kegs in. So they actually used to be in here, which is now our Sit 
one time you asked for brewery. Actually, you then that side fermenters. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, this I had in my brain. Oh, you know, this is the red beard. Red beard. Yes. Red beard. Uh, well, having a, a beard that doesn't have red in it anymore it used to be somewhere on there. Oh, I like that. It's almost it's almost fruity. Yeah, it's got a good caramel malt character to it. Yeah, it's got a really nice uh, caramel. Again, it's really smooth and really easy uh, drinking. Mm. Yeah, I think the caramel is what comes out the most. Mm -hmm. I think my rankings so far, we got one more to go. It's the IPA. My rankings are the cider first, then the milk stout, then the ginger beer, and then this red ale. It's the Irish red. But all of them have been excellent so far. Traditional hop I'm not a hophead myself, but that will deliver if you're a hophead. Yeah, if you're a hophead, it's got a lot of it. And you can win tickets by listening to me on the River 97.3 in the afternoons.